uh, welcome to the course on uh, computer networks and internet protocols. Uh, so, in this course uh, we are talking about the uh, 5 different layers of the TCP IP protocol stack. Uh, so, till now uh, we you have a good idea about uh, this uh, 5 different layers of the TCP IP protocol stack and uh, Professor Shomogos has already given you a broad overview of the different applications that can run on top of the network protocol stack. Uh, so, today uh, I will start with the second layer of the protocol stack that is the transport layer of the protocol stack and uh, we will look into different services which are there uh, at the transport layer of the protocol stack and how it helps you to provide end to end connectivity between two machines and transfer data from one machine to another machine. So, uh, we will look into the various aspects of the transport layer protocol stack. Uh, so, before going to that let me give you a brief overview about uh, how different devices in the network are connected. Uh, so, at the two ends we have uh, two different devices or two different uh, machines. Uh, so, these are the two different hosts which are transferring data between themselves and uh, at the two end host we have all these 5 layers of the TCP IP protocol stack starting from the application layer where you are running certain kind of applications like the browser applications or like the chat applications. Then you have this transport layer which provides the end to end connectivity between the two layers of the protocol stack. After the transport layer you have the data link layer which will help you to find out a suitable path between two devices in the network through multiple intermediate devices like, like the routers or the switches. Uh, after the network layer you have the data link layer, the task of the data link layer is to uh, provide you the channel access mechanism when multiple nodes are trying to transmit simultaneously and they are utilizing the same communication media like the same wireless channel or the uh, same wired network. And finally, you have this physical layer of the protocol stack which takes care of the physical layer signaling techniques and the different modulation and the coding schemes. Now, the two end host uh, in the diagram they have um, both the 5 layers of the protocol stack starting from the application layer and the physical layer. Now, the intermediate devices they may, may not have this all the 5 different layers of the protocol stack. So, for example, uh, sometime in the network you have these devices which we call as the L2 switch or the layer 2 switch. The layer 2 switch has the protocol stack up to the second layer like up to the data link layer. Uh, then uh, you can have this layer 3 devices, these are we call as the layer 3 switch or a router. So, this layer 3 switch or the router they have up to the network layer of the protocol stack. So, they uh, help you finding out the paths among multiple hosts or multiple devices in the network when you are trying to make an end to end communication. Now, the transport layer it sits on top of the network layer and the transport layer is only there at the two end host. And the task of the transport layer is to ensure the end to end performance at the end to end functionalities of the network. So, we look into the details that what are the different end to end functionalities in the network which can be uh, utilized uh, or which can be implemented as a part of the transport layer. And uh, interestingly you can also write your own program to support or to configure the transport layer to make two end devices communicate with each other or talk with each other. Uh, so, we look into all those details in uh, subsequent classes where we look into something called a socket programming to find out how you can uh, send uh, data end to end uh, between the two end host. So, before going to that let us look into the various aspects or various design primitives of the transport layer which has been uh, utilized by the network to ensure reliable and uh, high performance data delivery between any two host in the network or uh, any two remote hosts in the network. So, these two remote hosts can be uh, sitting uh, in two different countries or two parts of the world. So, uh, it may happen that one machine is residing at say uh, here in IIT Kharagpur, another machine is residing in uh, say at the Google office at um, USA. So, whenever you are trying to make these two nodes talk to each other, uh, it is just like that you need to have set up 
uh, of multiple end to end functionalities like um, the lower layer of the protocol stack first of all they are not reliable there can be packet loss from this lower layers of the protocol stack. So, the transport layer ensures the reliability of uh, data transmission. At the same time, it also offers multiple other services. So, let us look into the details of how these different services are implemented in the transport layer of the protocol stack. So, uh, well, so this is this diagram actually gives you the implementation semantics of uh, different layers of the protocol stack if you look into the perspective of an individual computer or an individual end host. Uh, so, if you look into an individual computer, a computer primarily have uh, three different uh, uh, modules like uh, at the bottom you have the hardware module of a computer. Uh, here uh, in case of a networking devices, this hardware module contains your uh, network interface card or the uh, NIC. NIC or we call it as the uh, network interface card. So, this network interface card uh, provides you the hardware layer functionality. So, this entire physical layer it is implemented as a part of the uh, hardware as a part of the network interface card. Then uh, on top of the hardware you have the firmware or the device driver. So, this firmware or the device driver it uh, provides you a way to interact with the physical layer. Uh, so, this firmware or the device driver uh, that has the implementation of part of the data link layer and the part of the physical layer it varies from uh, different variant of network uh, and uh, different variants of vendors. So, for example, if you think about the wireless network. Uh, so, the physical layer it is entirely implemented in the hardware and also nowadays some part of the wireless uh, data link layer protocol it is also implemented as a part of the hardware to make it fast or to make it uh, uh, make it uh, robust in the context of uh, large number or large amount of data delivery. Uh, on the other hand uh, many of the device drivers uh, in uh, wireless uh, environment as well as uh, wired environment the data link layer is implemented as a part of the device driver or the firmware. So, uh, the device driver or the firmware that you install for your network interface card that primarily have the MAC layer uh, implementation. Then uh, a part of the MAC layer which is uh, later on we will see that it is called a logical link control module. So, a part of the MAC layer and then the upper part of the uh, protocol stack like the network layer and the transport layer implementation they are implemented as a part of the software or the kernel uh, of your uh, network protocol stack. So, it is it is the part of the kernel uh, if you think about a Unix type of uh, operating system where inside the kernel you have the implementation of uh, the higher part of the data link layer which we call as the logical link control and then um, the entire implementation of the network layer or the sometime we call it the IP layer in the context of uh, TCP IP protocol stack and then the implementation of the transport layer uh, the different type of transport layer protocols which are implemented as a part of your, uh, your uh, uh, software or operating system software or uh, in a Unix type environment it is the uh, kernel part of the operating system that implements uh, this transport layer and the network layer. Then on top of that you have multiple applications running. Uh, so, these different applications are uh, uh, de designed by different uh, network designer or different application designers. We will also learn how to implement a network application which can talk over uh, two end to end devices. So, these applications can be the browser application to access um, web data or that application can be certain kind of chat application where multiple parties want to chat with each other or it can be something like a standalone application say for example, uh, in an android based operating system you see there are multiple application the facebook application, the twitter application, the youtube application that access data over the internet. So, all these different applications are implemented as a part of your application layer. Now, in below the application layer we have the transport layer of the protocol stack. So, you can think of that this transport layer it makes a interface between the user application and the operating system. So, whenever the data from the user application is going to the operating system it is going via the transport layer. So, uh, let us look into that uh, how these different uh, layers of the protocol stack adds up 
their own header. Uh, in the initial discussion of the TCP IP protocol stack, uh, you have got a broad overview about uh, how the data is being passed through multiple layers of the protocol stack. So, in the application layer, if you think about the context of an HTTP application which is sending data on top of a browser. Uh, so, you have this HTTP data that is coming from the browser and on top of that the HTTP protocol it's, it adds up its own header. So, this HTTP header information um, it contains the various information about the application layer uh, connectivity. Then this entire data the HTTP data along with this HTTP header that comes as a part of your transport layer data. So, this transport layer data it is the entire data which is coming from the application layer and with this transport layer data we add up a transport layer header. So, we look into the different type of transport layer protocol like the TCP protocol or the UDP protocol uh, and various other transport layer protocols are there like RTP. So, every individual protocol whichever you are going to use. So, as an application developer you have to uh, mention that which particular transport layer uh, protocol you are going to utilize you are going to use uh, for your purpose whether you are going to use TCP type of application or whether you are going to use uh, UDP type of application. So, the difference between the TCP type of uh, application and the UDP type of application we will look into uh, shortly. Uh, so, uh, so, the transport layer it adds up its own header uh, with the application layer data that contains multiple information for managing the transport layer protocol. Now, this entire transport layer data and the transport layer header it comes as a data to the network layer and the network layer adds up its own header then it comes to the data link layer. The data link layer again adds up its own header uh, we call it as a MAC header uh, in the context of a data link layer and finally, it comes to the physical layer. So, whenever you are coming to the physical layer you can see that you have a, a small amount of data which is coming from HTTP and then uh, uh, different type of headers which are being added by different layers of the protocol stack. So, uh, the application layer it has, it has added up the HTTP header then the transport layer it has added up its own head, header then the IP layer it has added up the IP header finally, the data link layer has added up its own header and um, the physical layer adds up a uh, physical header and sometime for some protocol it also adds up a trailer to actually identify an end to end frame. So, that way the entire thing gets delivered uh, over the network. Now, uh, if you look into the context of the transport layer that why do we require the transport layer in the uh, internet. Now, just below the transport layer you have the network layer and the functionality of the network layer uh, is to ensure the datagram delivery. So, when you say it as a datagram delivery it indicates that the network layer uh, whenever it will receive a packet uh, in the packet or in the network layer context we call it as a datagram. So, whenever it will receive that datagram in the datagram it there is this uh, source address and the destination address field. So, the task of the network layer is to look into the destination address and accordingly forward the packet to the next hub. So, the network layer basically ensures the data delivery among multiple hops in your devices. So, for example, uh, say you want to transfer a datagram or transfer certain data from one machine at IIT Kharagpur to another machine which is residing at the Google user. Say you are going to access www.google.com. So, whenever you are going to access that and your data need to be transferred from your machine say currently I am at Kharagpur. So, the machine uh, of uh, at Kharagpur the data need to be transferred to uh, the Google server which is there in the USA. Now, in between there are these multiple routers which are there uh, we call it as the layer 3 switches or sometimes people call it as a layer 3 devices. So, there are multiple routers there in between. So, the task of those routers is to forward the packet to the end host. Now, whenever the routers are forwarding the packet to the end host and uh, here we are thinking about the packet switching principle or uh, packet switching architecture in the uh, principle of packet switching multiplex um, packet switching architecture or packet multiplexing architecture what happens that um, uh, the intermediate routers they have a finite amount of buffer and the packets are pushed to that buffer then the router performs a route lookup on the by looking into the header of that packet and then decide that which particular outgoing interface the packet need to be transferred 
Now, when our router is doing this task and by the time it is receiving multiple data from multiple other neighboring routers. So, the architecture of this entire, uh, entire network is uh, really little complicated. So, let me just give you one, one example. So, you have one intermediate router here whose task is to send the data and it is also receiving the data from multiple other routers. So, it is receiving the data from all these different routers and then it task is to send this data to some next hop router one or two multiple next hop routers. Now, this particular router it maintains an interface queue and that interface queue will temporarily hold all the packets. Now, uh, in, in any devices this, tem this particular uh, host uh, or this particular device it has finite amount of uh, uh, buffer space within it because it has finite amount of buffer space within it. It may happen that because of high load in the network the buffer become full when the buffer will become full the packet will start dropping from the inter uh, intermediate routers. So, that way uh, the network layer although it task is to find out or its task is to send the data from one end host to another end host. Uh, many of the times uh, it fails to support reliability. Reliability in the sense that there is no guarantee that your particular data that will be transferred from one end of the host to another end of the host. It may happen that at intermediate routers the packet gets dropped because of this kind of buffer overflow. Apart from buffer overflow uh, there can be error in du uh, during the physical transmission of the packet there can be uh, channel interference which can happen in the case of a uh, wireless network. So, there are multiple reasons because of which a packet can get dropped. Now, whenever a packet is getting dropped or the packet is being lost while doing a end to end delivery of the packet by the trans uh, by the data uh, network layer. Uh, so, we say that the network layer provides this dat datagram delivery, but this datagram delivery is unreliable. So, it supports unreliable datagram delivery. Now, whenever you are uh, providing unreliable datagram delivery at the network layer, then at the transport layer your task is to ensure that the packets or the message which are you trying to send from one end host to another end host that messages are transferred correctly. So, in other words what we can say that uh, uh, the application should not get hampered by the loss of the data from the uh, intermediate routers or the intermediate network devices. Uh, so, the transport layer it takes care of uh, this particular thing. So, the transport layer it provides reliable data delivery on top of this uh, unreliable data datagram delivery which is supported at the network layer. So, the task of the transport layer is that to monitor whether a particular data is being transferred at the other end host or not. If it is being transferred, so it is happy. If it is not being transferred, then the task of the transport layer would be to monitor that and if it finds out that well certain data got lost while doing transmission, uh, it task could be to support or to retransmit the data so that eventually the message that the application was trying to send to the other end that is getting delivered. So, one important task of this transport layer is to ensure this reliable data delivery. So, to ensure this reliable data delivery transport layer can provide other services like this connection establishment. So, the concept of the connection is just to say a hello uh, to the other end host. So, for example, whenever you are making a telephone call. Uh, so, once the other end picks up the phone your first voice is or first message is a kind of hello message. So, through the hello message you want to ensure that the other end is properly able to receive the message that you are going to transmit. So, once the other end also acknowledges your hello message by saying another hello and both of you have uh, established a kind of logical communication or a logical connection between yourselves then you start talking or start sending other messages. So, in the data transfer perspective uh, this connection establishment are just like this hello messages say uh, one end of the devices it wants to make sure that the other end is alive and the other end is ready to receive the message. So, that is the connection establishment service which is being provided by the transport layer. Then the transport layer provides end to end packet delivery. So, there are 
two different groups of transport layer protocol. One transport layer protocol is this UDP or the user datagram protocol. So, UDP is not like a transport layer protocol or it does not provide any special transport layer services. So, what UDP does? UDP just work like a wrapper of this um, uh, network layer protocol stack or the IP layer of your protocol stack. So, the task of the UDP layer is that whatever data you are uh, receiving from the network layer, you directly pass that data, do some small checking and then directly pass that data to the application. So, why we require UDP? Because certain kind of uh, protocol, certain kind of application, they do not require reliability, but uh, the importance is the performance. So, you can understand that whenever you are implementing this multiple type of services at the transport layer, obviously it will introduce certain amount of delay in the network. And whenever the transport layer is introducing this certain amount of delay in the network, uh, the other end, uh, it will suffer from uh, a large, uh, 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 considerably more delay uh, compared to uh, a, a normal uh, datagram delivery because you are providing additional services at the transport layer. So, sometimes the application requires a real time reception of the packet, but it can tolerate the loss, the channel loss. So, the application does not require reliability rather getting a packet quickly is the major importance. So, in that particular case, we do not implement any transport layer services at all. So, we just use this UDP protocol and the UDP protocol helps you to embed this uh, entire network layer data. Uh, and pass it through the transport layer and give that data to the um, application which is demanding for a service uh, which is important uh, for uh, which is important uh, for application perspective in the context of uh, having uh, application uh, layer data delivery and uh, it does not demand for a reliable transmission of data. The transport layer also provides certain additional services like the flow control and the congestion control. So, this flow control and the congestion control, it is just like say whenever you have two different hosts which are trying to transfer data among themselves and there are this intermediate network, this intermediate network um, can introduce um, multiple delays uh, uh, or packet loss in the network. Uh, so, the flow control ensures that well this particular end uh, say it may happen that um, the receiver can receive the data at a rate of 1 Mbps and the transmitter can send data at a rate of 10 Mbps. Now, if that is the case and, uh, uh, and uh, this transmitter, so I am naming it as T and the receiver I am naming it as R. Now, if the transmitter sends data at a, at a rate of 10 Mbps and the receiver can receive data only at a rate of 1 Mbps. So, what may happen that the additional data that you are pushing in the network uh, that is making the network uh, or, or that is having a overhead at the network, but uh, those particular data are not getting delivered at the other receiver. Like it is making the network congested by pushing additional data in the network, but uh, it, is, it is not um, uh, making the receiver to receive the data at that particular rate. So, during that time, uh, this particular additional transmission of data from the transmitter side is a wastage for the network perspective. And that is why the transmitter and the receiver need to communicate among themselves, the transmitter and the receiver need to agree among themselves, so that the transmitter can only send the data that the receiver can receive. So, this particular concept we call it as a flow control. Now, there is another thing in the network which is called as the congestion control. So, the congestion control is something like this. So, uh, whenever you are transferring data in the network, if I just represent the uh, network as a graph where every network devices is uh, represent at a node. Uh, so, in that case, this particular node, if you just think of an intermediate node, it receives data from multiple other parts. So, you can just think of this entire network uh, as a uh, anonymous to a uh, as a synonymous to a uh, road traffic network. Now, in case of a road traffic network in a in a uh, road uh, junction uh, in a in a road junction point, if traffic is coming from multiple roads, uh, in that case, uh, it may happen that well, this intermediate junction becomes congested. So, this uh, transport layer 
of your network protocol stack, it supports congestion control. So, uh, it avoids congestion whenever you are receiving packets from multiple different paths. Another functionality of the transport layer is to support ordered packet delivery. So, what is this ordered packet delivery? The ordered packet delivery is, so whenever you are transferring the data between two end host, it may happen that well, uh, some of the data is being say you are, you are sending data from this host to another host which is connected at a different end and whenever you are transferring the data, it may happen that well, a part of the packet, some packets are using this path to reach the host. Whereas, uh, uh, some packets are using this path to reach at the end host. Now, uh, because of the delay difference between these two parts, it may happen that well, certain packets reach um, earlier than other packets. So, uh, you are say I am giving uh, every packet at a sequence number 1, 2, 3, 4 that way. Uh, because of this uh, delivery through multiple parts, it may happen that packet 3 has reached first and after that you have received packet 2. So, you can receive this kind of out of order packet. So, the task of the transport layer is to ensure that even if you, you are receiving out of order packets, this out of order packets will be eventually get uh, ordered and uh, it will be delivered to the application at a, as a ordered sequence of data. Otherwise, the applications will not be able to uh, able to find it that what is the sequence of data which is uh, being coming. So, the application need to always get the data in sequence. So, uh, this particular module in the transport layer, uh, it will ensure the order delivery of the packets over this um, uh, unreliable uh, datagram delivery which is being supported at the network layer. Now, in a nutshell, what we can say that well, whenever you are transferring data over the network layer, the network layer just ensure of delivering the datagram at the other end host uh, which is there um, uh, your which is working like your destination, but the network layer it does not support the various required services which are important from the application perspective. So, in that particular context it is important to provide certain level of end to end service in the internet. Now, this transport layer it provides these sets of end to end services over the internet. Now, uh, in this particular context, uh, uh, we will we'll have uh, multiple different services uh, which are being provided uh, by the network layer and uh, uh, we see that well, this TCP protocol, the transmission control protocol, this TCP protocol provides all these different services which is being required at the network layer like this connection establishment, reliable data delivery, flow control and congestion control as well as the order packet delivery. Whereas, UDP protocol is just work like a wrapper of the network layer protocol to transfer the data directly to the application layer without providing any such services like this connection establishment, reliable data delivery, flow control and congestion control, order packet delivery and so on. Uh, so, that way we broadly have two groups of protocol at the transport layer. One group of protocol, it task is just to ensure that the data is being uh, sent or the data is being transferred to the other end. Um, so, whatever is being supported by the network layer that services is directly provided to the application layer. Uh, so, the UDP protocol belongs to that uh, group of protocol where we do not support reliability, order delivery, uh, delivery and all these services and in this case the application requirement is to ensure uh, only to deliver the packet and it can tolerate the loss itself. Uh, for example, certain multimedia protocol can do that. Um, it can tolerate the loss up to certain level because whenever you are receiving data frame by frame wise, the important thing is that the frame is being received. But even if certain frames in between are being missed, then the multimedia protocol they can do an averaging uh, of uh, the first frame received and the third frame received and from there it can approximate the second frame and play it. So, that way uh, up to certain level of data loss it can tolerate this kind of multimedia protocols, but um, uh, transferring the data 
uh, within a predefined timeout is very important. So, because uh, if you implement this kind of services at the transport layer that will take certain amount of time for processing the data and if there is a loss it will give more priority on retransmitting the loss segment or retransmitting the loss packet rather than uh, transferring the new packet. Uh, you will experience more delay if you are going to implement those levels of services at the transport layer. So, UDP provides a service where uh, this uh, loss or reliability is not important rather transferring the data within some timeout duration uh, that is important. On the other hand for applications like um, say file transfer or the web data transfer reliability uh, order packet delivery these particular functionalities are more important. Uh, so, we use TCP kind of protocol. So, if you look into the protocols like HTTP, FTP, uh, those kind of protocol, they uses TCP type of uh, protocol at the transport layer, whereas protocols like certain multimedia protocol as well as the DNS protocol at the application layer, it uses UDP type of protocol. So, in the next class, so we will look into the different services uh, which are being provided uh, by this transport layer and we will look into the details of those services. Uh, starting from the connection establishment. Uh, so, see you all uh, again in the next class uh, where we will look into the connection establishment uh, paradigm in the context of the transport layer. Thank you.